be a relatively short meeting today. As you know, uh, the task today is simply to elect uh, a chair, a vice chair, and the treasurer uh, for this commission, and then the real work um, begins. Um, and um, uh, so let's just, um, I guess we can just jump right in, right? Uh, does anybody have, would anyone like to be uh, nominated as uh, chair of the commission? Or nominate themselves? May I, may I nominate Anaida to be the chair? We have a motion to nominate Anaida to be the chair. Second. We have uh, a second. From Rep. Mendez. All those in favor, you can raise your aye. hand. Aye. All right. It's, it's unanimous. <laughs> chair Roman, felicidades. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, and uh, now for a vice chair, do we have a nomination for vice chair of the commission, the permanent commission on the status of Latinos and Latinas? Um, is, is everybody on, on the call right now, all the, all the members, or are we missing anybody? Um, we are probably, I think we're missing um, one. Uh, and then there is another appointment that is uh, not what's, that is outstanding right now um, that, um, we're in touch with the governor's office on. I mean, I, I, I would nominate Zoila because she's from the North Shore and, you know, and she's been in roles like this before. So she, you know, I know Lorna is incredibly busy. I'm closer to Boston and we want to make sure we have uh, diversity of representation from the states. Excellent. We have a motion to nominate Zoila for vice chair. Do we have a second? Second. Second from Dr. Rivera. Uh, raise your hand if you're in favor. All right. It's unanimous. Oila, congratulations, our vice chair. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's an honor to be working close, closer with Anita, who has been a friend and colleague for many years. So. Yes, yes. Likewise, Oila. Much respect mm -hmm. and admiration. Y cariño, mucho cariño. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and then lastly, uh, again, based off of the statue and what's required uh, for standing up this permanent commission, uh, we need a treasurer. Uh, so do we have a motion for a treasurer? For self or self-nomination. <laughs> or self-nomination, yes. I can volunteer to be the treasurer. <laughs> so moved. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Second. Yeah. All those in favor. Aye. All right. It's also unanimous. Uh, Dr. Rivera, thank you very much. Um, again, we all know how busy the three of you are, uh, and this is taking on yet another thing in your busy agendas. Um, so we really, really appreciate it. And um, we think, I think that, you know, this commission, uh, has the potential to be something really important. Uh, it's permanent. It's not a you know one-off commission that's going to generate a report. Uh, you're you're sort of tasked with standing up a mini state agency, and so um, you know I, I have uh, the most confidence in the three of you and and making that possible uh, and making sure that the needs uh, of uh, the Latino community across the Commonwealth stay center and forefront. Uh, not only to the public sector, but also to the private sector and the collaborations that we need to move our communities forward. So thank you guys for agreeing to this. Thank you for agreeing for more work. Um, uh, and uh, know that you're not going to be doing this alone. Like I'm happy to continue to be a facilitator, supporter in any way that that I can. Thank you, Andy. Um, so as, as next steps, um, you know, I know that we need to hire um, a, an executive director. Um, is there currently any admin support uh, that we could um, use uh, for the next few meetings until we hire an executive director? Yes. So Sasha from my team obviously has been very um, helpful in putting together all these meetings, uh, making sure that all the nominations are in. Uh, and so we're happy to continue to play sort of administrative support role until we're able to um, bring on an executive director. Um, you know, it, it, um, 
hopefully it's, not, it's limited in scope because we have a ton of you know stuff that we're also uh, working on, but happy to continue to play that administrative role in that sort of convening role. Uh, but moving forward, I would say that the, the emails uh, and the communication come from you, the chair, uh, and, and your team. Um, but we're happy to play a, a supportive role uh, along the way. Um, and um, just so everybody knows, the commission does have a line item for $150,000. Um, there is a draft job description for the uh, executive director for the Disabilities Commission um, that I can drop in uh, the chat here so that you all have something to look at. Mm -hmm. um, second. Um, and so our commission has a budget of $150,000, but the commit the three commissions that were established in the police reform bill have a shared budget of, I believe, $200,000, right, Sasha? Yes. Yes. So, and so, great. Um, so one of the, one of, one of the immediate, I think action items will be to um, have a conversation with uh, the executive director of the commission uh, on the status of persons with disabilities. Um, and we're happy to facilitate that email intro. Um, and then uh, potentially the chair of that commission as well, just to learn um, how they've sort of stood their commission up and any lessons that we can learn from them and, you know, that potentially is a, someone or something we could have on the agenda for the next meeting as well, if the chair is, is interested in that. Absolutely. No, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I just want to make sure that, um, you know, that we are able to to expedite. I mean, not not rush because we, we don't want to hire anybody in a rush, but try to be as quick as possible in finding somebody to steward the work. Right. Because. Um, to your point, we're all very busy and I don't want to add more work to anybody unnecessarily. And if we have the line item, then, then we should be able to um, to leverage that. So and to clarify, so we have a line item of one hundred fifty thousand dollars specific to our work. And then on top of that, there is an additional two hundred thousand dollars that is to be divided among three. Yes. OK, that's correct. OK. All right. And then the dollars would be used to hire the ED and what what else are we authorized to to um yes I, th I think it's just to carry out the duties as described in the statute mm -hmm. um so i imagine that's other like administrative costs um you know digital costs programmatic costs um i'm assuming um if the commission wanted to you could split up the budget in a manner that allows for you know, part-time or intern um, related uh, staff as well. Um, so I think that's, um, you know, a good, good conversation for us to have. Mm -hmm. And then there, there's, I'm assuming that there's some office space at the state house that this, um, that this uh, commission would have access to, or is that not determined yet? That is a great question. Um, I think, so so do we have an answer on that? I remember a discussion around, no, we don't have an answer on that yet. There was some discussion around um, potentially collaborating with the treasurer's office, wasn't there, Sasha, at some point? Um, so um, I think those those discussions are still happening. Okay. Great, thank you. And um, and just for context, how long, and if, if I don't know if you, you might know this, but how long has it taken other commissions to be able to really, you know, start, uh, producing results because I, I want to make sure that we're not staying behind that we you know we keep up with with what's typically um, expected and I know yeah. that we're the to to you know to have a report by uh, next summer and that's you know I mean that's the relatively tight runway if you ask me mm -hmm. just because we don't even have an executive director or any staff right and so yeah. I'm sure that we're realistic yeah, I mean, I don't, there's not like, uh, you know, that's the, the sort of the gray area of this. There's not like a, here are the, you know, expected performance benchmarks that you have to hit at certain dates uh, for something like this. Um, and all the commissions are at varying places. Um, some of them are, uh, one of them is behind, you know, us, I would say, in terms of organizing. And that's okay. Like, there's people are going to be in different, uh, different um, points of their, you know, organizing. Um, so it'll be really up to, to this commission. The one thing that is in the statute is that, you know, that summer deadline around reporting. Um, but there's also, I feel like enough, um, 
variability or like gray area to be able to say like this is what our report is this year like for example this year our report could be a summary of the existing reports that everyone has done right like there's tons of reports oh, we don't need to reinvent the wheel and create new de data sets and you know go out and, and do all this work there's tons of work that has been done already whether through you know umass boston the gaston institute through um you know amplify or through latinos for education or through um you know mass budget what have you there's tons of data sets and information out there and so maybe year one is you know taking stock of what we know already right and what what the reports tell us already uh and maybe identifying areas for the commission to focus on that aren't in those reports or areas that we need to go deeper on um and so it's really up to the you know the leadership of this commission to figure out um how we want to best use this Yeah. I, I will say that, Aneda, our first call uh, should be to to connect to all of those um, uh, people that are already out there and 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 work with everyone uh, in partnership to develop what the what we want this commission work to look like uh, moving forward. We don't have to reinvent the wheel, as you know, in our line of work as attorneys. Uh, that's something that we keep. Um, it's very. Um, sort of like a theme of the, the wheel is already invented. So let's let's from the work that is already in place, let's, let's use those, the partnerships of those who have done this work already uh, to, to, to sort of like uh, inform um, our, our next steps. Um, that would be my, my suggestion. Absolutely. I, I love that. I mean, Andy, um, you know, we, we did, discuss uh, this uh, last time we, we chatted. Uh, and and Suela, to your point, right? We have, I mean, at Amplify, we have a partnership with Gaston and we have so much data. You know, we, we've we commissioned the poll two years ago from Massing, the largest ever Latino poll in the in the state. We have, we've done research with Gaston for the last probably seven plus years, right, Lorna? Uh, every year we, we push out something. This year we're working on <clears throat> with with uh, Gaston and MTF we have the the Latino um, ex, um the council the governor's Latino council we have two reports from from the council so no no es por falta de, de información right so to your point as well Andy it's it's about looking at where we are and our new reality of like how we're growing and 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 the impact our community is having on on the economy but still those opportunity gaps that we should be pushing for so that we can advance the progress of, of um, and the prosperity of, of our community, right? Because at the end of the day, that's why we're here. We wanna make sure that our community gets ahead and has a fair chance. Lorna. Yeah, um, I guess I had a question too, of like how our body as well makes decisions um, and recommendations beyond our committee i am you know i want to learn a little more about that part too of um are there other sort of entities that say we all agree this is where we're you know what we should be doing based on listening sessions and whatever in information from stakeholders but um representative vargas like do you is there like another layer of and like another body of authority over this commission how does that work? Yeah, I mean, my understanding is the answer to that is no. Um, the idea was for this to be an independent, um, permanent, you know, mini state agency. Uh, somewhat, and I use state agency in in, in uh, quotation marks. Um, uh, so no, like we're not reporting to any anyone. Um, but okay. I think that I think that's a good question for us to also ask the existing commissions, um, how they think about this, um, both the, the two new ones that were created uh, and also the existing ones like the Asian American and Pacific Islander one, uh, like the um, uh, Commission on the Status of Women. Um, how do they think about you know their decision making and who do they feel like they answer to and uh, how do they measure, measure success? I think that you know one of the suggestions I'd have is you know maybe hearing from those commissions, uh, and in a coming meeting as well uh, to learn about their best practices and how we can um, best learn from them. That's great. Thank so, you. And to clarify, Andy, so 
we don't report per se um, to, you know, it's an independent commission, but our report we submit to the legislature. Yes, yes. Well, so yeah, the, there is a report that we have to submit to um, the legislature, the House, the Senate, the governor. Um, I think that's it. Um, so yes, thank you for that clarification. But in terms of like management, like report, like speaking up or speaking, you know, checking in uh, and performance management, that kind of thing, um, the, there isn't there isn't um that kind of hierarchy as i understand it and then and then also can you can you uh remind us what all the commissions are i mean i remember um the uh asian us asian american uh a women disabilities what are the others that are that have been established um Af african americans um American. is there another one we're missing sasha i don't know uh, isn't there a caribbean um no, I don't. No, they, yeah, I think that was just like a an advisory, maybe group or, or. But in terms of the permanent commissions, yeah, permanent commission on the status of women, permanent commission on the status of persons with disabilities, permanent commission on Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, um, permanent commission on African Americans. Uh, I think that's it. What are the three new ones that were? This. Disabilities, us, and African Americans. Bye. Wait, wait, Sasha may have more information. I apologize for the interruption. Um, just looking at the police reform commissions, the list of the commissions that are funded under that um, are uh, kind of in a line is the Commission on the Status of African Americans, Commission on the Status of Latinos and Latinas, Commission on the Status of Persons with Disabilities, and Commission on the Social Status of Black Men and Boys. Got it. So the only one we we're missing there was the, the social status of black men and boys, so specifically to um, black men and boys. And then there's the African American Commission as well. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you for clarifying. So there's I'm just I'm counting six six permanent commissions in total. That sounds right. Gracias. Yeah. So, but the two most established ones are the Commission on the Status of Women and the Commission on the Status of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. Mm -hmm. So there's sort of two frames that we can learn from. One is sort of the, the groups that have been doing this for a while, what have they learned? And then the groups that are just getting started like us. Great. And then, and then the, the disabilities, uh, the Commission on the Status of Persons with Disabilities, they already have their JD or do, excuse me, they already have their executive director, JD. They have their executive director. They do. Okay. Well, we As I understand it, the, the other commissions that were created in the uh, legislation do not have an executive director yet. Right, Sasha? To my knowledge, no. And, and this commission, it was originally activated back in the 80s, right? Or in the 90s when the Gaston was formed? It was called the Hispanic Commission back then. Got it. Okay. And it was permanent it was permanent also because I'm learning. Yeah, I think yeah. Do you know who's written about this is Carol Hardy Fanta. She has a book called Latino Politics. Um I have it here. I'm gonna try to copy the chapter on it <laughs> so we can all have it. I just found it last time. Yeah. Be great. I guess also um, a question I had was about, about um, and maybe this can come when you know folks from the commission on, on persons with disabilities it turns because we have you know a, pay, a public policy program here, and I could imagine like the students doing some of these reviews and summaries of all these different reports out there. Um, and helping us with that kind of work, um, but not till the spring semester. So I'm just putting it out there to our group. If that's something we want to do, like we would want to get like an internship description together. If it's paid even better, but you know, that's that's something students can do for credit anyway, right? So um, let's think about that. I, I think that would be an incredible opportunity, especially because if we're gathering data and we're synthesizing everything we have, that that student would be ideal to help us to 
to support in that in that work. Yeah, I think that's great. And I just dropped in the chat the um, AAPI Commission staff and interns so we can get a sense of um, how they think about this as well. Do might might we be able to get a uh, JD for for their interns just so that we can get a sense of you know how they are framing their work? Yeah, I think I think that'd be great. Maybe what we do after this call is um just do an email intro to each of their each of the executive directors that currently exist, mm -hmm. uh, and um to you and Ada, and then um we can go from there. Beautiful, thank you. And then perhaps uh if you don't mind copying me and Lorna because uh well excuse me me Zoila and Lorna just so that you know because we're the exact team yeah. And even if we all of us cannot meet with them, at least we're just in the loop. Yeah, that's great. The other thing I'm seeing on the API website is that they do have a separate nonprofit uh, that's associated with um, the organization. Uh, so I think that you know, there's another question around, um, you know, other like fundraising uh, needs, uh, but the statute does. I think speak to this as well that the commission can fundraise to uh, execute its its duties as well. Um, so another kind of strategic question to be thinking about moving forward as well. That's that's very good to know. So I was thinking about money. Um, I see, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like thinking about one hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars line item doesn't get us um, far, right? So if we think about the impact that we're gonna have, right? And um, how much work we can do, um, uh, it, it, I think um, the, you know, the financial aspect is very important. So that's really good to know. Yep. Okay, Madam Chair, you wanna close us out in case there are any other no. Are there any other items that uh, we wish to discuss before we wrap up today? Hi, everyone. I just wanted to say hi and apologize for being a little late. I'm so honored to be able to participate on this table among all of you. I, I know a little bit of you all. I'm looking forward to learn more. Um, and um, yeah, I'm excited to work with you all and, and to support in, in any capacity that, that I'm able to. So, you know, be before, thank you, Nori Elise. Before we close, why don't we just go around the, the you know, the chat just to quickly introduce, because I don't think we all know everybody, right? I don't think everybody knows everybody. So I'll I'll, I'll start. Um, Eneida Roman, uh, I am President CEO of Amplify Latinx, um, and I'm delighted to be here. Thank you. And I'll, I see Lorna next, and we can just popcorn. Um. Buenos dias, nice to meet you. I think I've met you before, but I'm um, really happy to um, be part of this group. Professor Lorna Rivera, I teach Latino studies here at UMass Boston. I'm also the director of the Gaston Institute. So um, let's see, Zola, you wanna go next? Uh, I have met Lorna. It's been a long time since we saw each other. My name is Zola Gomez. I am an immigration attorney uh, from the greater Lawrence area. And I am very happy to be here, be working with people that I know and people that I that I don't know and looking forward to getting to know everybody and really excited for, for, for the impact that we can have um, with this commission. Rita, do you want to go next? I see you too. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm Rita Mendez. I'm a state representative and I'm in Brockton and I'm just so happy to be here. And I'm also an immigration attorney. So this is awesome. Thank you. <laughs> okay. um, so Andy and Sasha, I mean, I think we all, we all know you, but why don't you just speak very quickly? Yeah. Um, Andy Vargas, uh, state rep for Haverhill. I'm the vice chair of the Massachusetts Black and Latino Caucus and also chair of the Aneda Flan Club. Um, good morning, Sasha Severino. I'm a legislative aide for Representative Andy Vargas, um, and I'll be assisting and facilitating things for the commission um, as we look towards getting an executive director. Lilian. Hi, uh, I'm Lilian Costa from uh, Brazil American Center in Framingham. I'm so happy to participate 
this commission and I want to learn from you guys. It's so new to me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And Norilis, I know you went already, but why don't you share a little bit about yourself so that everybody can know. Sure. Um, so I'm the District 3 representative in Chelsea and also council president. Um, and I've worked for over 18 years at La Colaborativa, currently the director of youth development. We love La Colaborativa. <laughs> and uh, Andy, can you tell us who's not on so that we know uh, who else is on? Um, the well, we just have um, Rep uh, Ramos as well. Okay. He was Good here. Morning. He was here on. Hi, right, good morning, everyone. Uh, State Representative Orlando Ramos from Springfield, Massachusetts, Ninth Hampton District. Uh, proud to be here with all of you on this commission. I believe I'm the only person on this commission from Western Massachusetts. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, uh, it's it, we do have a huge Latino population here in Western Mass. Springfield is uh, roughly 47% uh, Latino. Uh, our neighbors, uh, Holyoke and Chicopee, also have a significant Latino population. Holyoke is at 50%. Chicopee, I believe, is at 22% roughly. Um, and so there are a lot of Latinos here in Western Massachusetts looking forward to working with all of you on this commission to make sure that uh, the voices of Latinos across the Commonwealth are heard at the State House. And I'm uh, looking forward to uh, doing some great work together. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. Uh, so, and then, Andy, do we have anybody from Worcester? Um, I don't think we do. Um, and I actually think that everybody who has been appointed uh, thus far is actually here right now. Um, and so this is everyone that we know is already a commission member. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. So maybe we can speak offline about, you know, um, how many slots are left and, and who else uh, needs to be appointed because it would be nice to have a representation from Worcester just because, I mean, I believe Worcester is about a quarter Latino and, and you know, it's kind of like the heart of the state. So if there's space for that, that would be ideal. Yep, absolutely. Right. And there's a lot of Latinos, not only in Worcester, but in the surrounding communities, uh, Marlboro, uh, all that area. So it's good to have um, representation in that area. So. Central Mass, yeah. Definitely. Thank you so much. Okay, fantastic. Um, is there anybody else who wants to say anything before we wrap up? I think I'd just like to mention that I think the last meeting we said we would agree to meet on the second Wednesday of every month. Um, so I just want to confirm that that still works for people. That would be December 11th, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, I just want to do a disclaimer that um, I, 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 I do um, <laughs> represent a, a lot of people in deportation defense, so that um, sometimes will represent some challenges. Um, but um, I am, you know, like if, if I'm not available, I, I will be available at every meeting possible. But if I'm not available, it's because I am in, in, a, in a hearing and those happen sometimes within days, um, you know, I'm, I'm assigned to do a hearing, so. Is there a better day of the week where it's unlikely? No, Wednesday's perfect. Wednesday's perfect. Like, there is no better day of the week. Uh, if anything, it, it's it's so unpredictable. It's it's crazy. Wednesday Wednesday works. If it's, if it's not an individual hearing, uh, they happen um, quickly, quickly. If it's an individual hearing, then they could last hours. So it's the only difference. Thank you. Okay. Um, fantastic. So I, if there's nothing more. Uh, may I have a motion to adjourn? So move. Second. Second. More in a second. Okay, great. Um, okay, so seeing that, then this meeting is adjourned. And uh, we will meet again on December 11th. So essentially the second Wednesday of every month. Um, and uh, and so Sasha, what I'll do in the meantime is I'll, I'll rely on you to help me send out the calendar invitations and the Zoom links. And then once we have...